<laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, I will do a presentation about time savers for website builders and developers. This presentation will be online afterwards, and all the blue uh, words are hyperlinks. So this uh, links to Twitter. Um, my name is Peter Martin. I'm a volunteer in the Joomla community. Uh, besides Joomla, I also organize a Linux user group in my hometown, Nijmegen, in the Netherlands. And I organize Open Coffee, uh, which is uh, for self-employed people to have a networking event every month. Um, I have my own company since 2005. It's called DB8. And I do Joomla support and development for other companies who have Joomla websites. Uh, recently I moved to another place, uh, to a new office. It's here in the middle of Nijmegen. And um, recently I also created my first commercial extension called Options Manager. Uh, with Options Manager you can export and import settings of all components in your site. And there's also a free version which is called Option Manager Lite and it also it, it only does uh, the components. I will show you that later, this later on. So before I will start, first a small disclaimer. Um, you are all here in this room and I would like to uh, use those time savers for you. Please use those at home because it might save you some time. However, uh, the time you save, there might be a problem because you end up using it for other work probably and not for free time. Um, at the end of this presentation I will do a small demo. I use a Joomla website but uh, no websites were harmed for this presentation and also uh, this will be the last GIF, animated GIF in this presentation <laughs> because I know it could be annoying. So in this presentation I show you uh, 10 different points uh, where you can save a lot of time. So the first thing is a project. If you start a new website uh, I always consider it as a project and when you do a project you need a definition of the project uh, planning and management and the first thing the definition what are you going to do for a customer well of course you probably do something with a contract or uh, um, an order confirmation where you define the scope of the, the project and also define the responsibilities of this everybody involved however this is just the basic thing you have to do if you really want to do it proper, you do something like an internet project plan. Who does internet projects plan for your customers? Who knows what it is? Okay. Um, it's, uh, you, you help the customer <coughs> think about the pro project. Like, let them define when is the website a success. And also, they should allocate some uh, budget for promotion. I mean, it's not uh, really your... Uh, you, you don't have to do things with that kind of budget but if you want to have your customer have a success please take care of it this is a sort of marketing plan for their website um, you can do this and you can also create some budget at the customer so um, they might uh, maybe spend six hours eight hours just for you writing the plan because then the project will be better so if the project is, uh, is uh, uh, if you can start with the project, you have to do the planning of the project. And I am a fairly optimistic guy. However, uh, some things that I always have problems with is uh, calculation of the planning. Like you should, in fact, cal calculate like a pessimist. I mean, we all know how much time things cost, but we don't take into account what the customer takes your time like you have to wait for the content of the marketing department the manager wants to approve everything uh, the IT department don't doesn't trust you hosting companies if they you have to move hosting uh, they are difficult with the authorization code to move and finally everybody in the organization wants to do a saying about this project so this takes a lot of time and one of the things the, the content if the customer doesn't deliver things on time, first you have to clearly, clearly communicate that uh, one day late is maybe one uh, week delay in the project. Because of course 
uh, if they uh, do it one day late, it could be one day later for you to, to do it. However, you have also other work if you're a self-employed uh, person. So uh, you have to take into account, and this is just a, um, an optimistic one, you could also say two weeks late. So they will be uh, on time, hopefully. So if you uh, are working with, you have to do some project management. And you could use some tools for that, some project management tools. Who in this audience is using tools? And what kind of tools? Redmond. Okay, other, one, other ones? Okay. okay, other ones? Well, a very simple wonder list. Just okay, to-do list. Yes. Yeah. And Jira? Jira, yeah. I think it's system. Oh. oh, yeah, that's also possible. And yeah, uh, Jira, I, I, know, I know Jira, I don't have experience with it. It's uh, Basecamp is another one, and you have a lot of those. Um, who is who the audience is uh, self-employed? Okay, so these systems are maybe a bit too big. In that case, you could use a low-tech tool like uh, Google Spreadsheets. Um, instead of writing emails to my customers and they write back, you have to do this, that, that, etc. Um, we you get uh, lost of the track of all the things. So what you could do is just create a spreadsheet and do something like this. Uh, spreadsheet, share, uh, make <coughs> it, uh, share it with the customer and you can uh, put everything in, your project, what to do. Yes, Frank? Yeah, just in addition, uh, we are also using um, an OS ticket, which makes it a little bit easier. So it's intermediate between Google Spreadsheet, yeah. OS tickets, and then you have the other tools. Okay, so it will be a middle tag. Yeah. This is low tag. Okay. Uh, good point. So, um, uh, OS <coughs> tickets, it's called. OS tickets, yeah. Okay. Um, so, when I do stuff for customers, I sometimes use these kinds of uh, diagrams, and I just change the colors, uh, and I put dates in it if the thing has been done. So, um, another point is uh, the workflow. I think everybody has another workflow, um, but I would recommend to use this kind of workflow. Does anybody no DTAP, what it stands for? Yeah? Yes, you know the Dutch one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, it's develop, test, acceptance, and production. And uh, let's just start with my own uh, one, my development environment. I use uh, a Linux machine, and I use uh, Apache, PHP, uh, MariaDB all on uh, my uh, system. I installed everything myself and of course Joomla. And besides this kind of development tools, I also use uh, PHP Storm, which I think is marvelous. And I use Git and depends on the project. If it's uh, a public project, I use GitHub. If it's not, not, then I use Bitbucket or there are even some tools that you can have all the, go the code inside your own uh, in your own office. For testing I just use any server that's available and I use Akiba Backup and Kickstart and Akiba Backup I have the pro version of it <coughs> because it's also nice to have it on a live site <coughs> so uh, you can install or I mean move all the backups automatically into the cloud <coughs> and uh, for moving files I use a deployment tool in PHP Storm and at the end of this presentation, I will show you how to do that. Um, then uh, the, the next phase is, yes? If you have your own server and you use GitHub or Bitmarket, um, why are you using um, SFTP tools for transferring files from one server to another? Uh, <coughs> yes, or a deployment tool in PHP Storm, yes. Uh, because I, uh, I use Git a lot, but I'm not really that uh, uh, convenience with it, but I will. Uh, you are walking just a couple of steps. Okay. <laughs> um, so my acceptance uh, server is just probably the same server as where the live site is, because then you have the same operating system, PHP version, and MySQL version as the production. I could put it in a subdomain or in a subfolder, but I don't want other people to see the acceptance environment so I HD access protected uh, with my own IP address and with the client's IP address so we can both look at that it works uh, meaning just with when two people visit it 
But uh, if you go to Germany. Sorry? It doesn't work in Germany. Because, because you have to get a yeah. new IP address every day. It can work in Germany if you use uh, VPS and then you can just select your VPS with all the same. So yeah, I know that it's difficult here. So no, I, I can just uh, get an IP uh, ask, asking my provider. H here in oh, Germany? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Which provider do you have? Uh, Vodafone. Okay. You can just uh, so ask. It's possible because I, I heard a lot of stories IP about... IP4. Uh, yeah. 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 <coughs> well, good to know. Just a request and then you can get it. Okay, so Woohoo uh, ours is going to request it on Monday. <laughs> okay. Um, so <coughs> the production uh, uh, side is just a server of the client or uh, some hosting company and I will talk a bit about it later. Uh, first, other uh, uh, tools you can use to have um, a workflow with DTAP. Um, the first one is uh, DTAP. With this tool, you can uh, create a development environment, put it to demo, and then to production. And uh, the person behind it, uh, Xavier, is over here. So if you want to know more about it, uh, he can tell you. If you are working with other people, like uh, you have a lot of colleagues and you work on the same project, then Fragrant might be a good option. Because with Fragrant, you have virtual box and you all have the same uh, environment. And there are also uh, ready-made environments that you can download uh, uh, from the cloud. It's called Vagrant Cloud. And then you can select, I want to have uh, Ubuntu or Debian or CentOS uh, with certain PHP version, certain database version. And then it's only for testing. I would not recommend using uh, the Vagrant Cloud boxes for live sites. Um, there is one thing uh, which is a bit uh, a disadvantage of Vagrant. Uh, it has the operating system and everything <coughs> in it. So if you're doing something with Vagrant, you might look at Docker as well, because Docker is also a virtual container for applications. And you can use multiple containers, connect them to each other, and just have one Docker container running PHP. And when you think, OK, uh, PHP 5.6, I want to do it with PHP 7.1, you just uh, uh, bring the container down, bring a new container up with uh, 7, and then you can test it with an, a better PHP version. So regarding hosting, uh, this is a really fancy hosting, and I, uh, we all hope that our providers use this kind of services. However, um, sometimes we have customers and they have some really cheap hosting. And why? Because it's cheap. And uh, I would not recommend it, because it will give you a lot of extra time. And I always tell my customers, okay, if you, have this op if th if you use this uh, for a housing um, company, um, we will have a lot of extra time. Yeah, you will pay me for my uh, extra service and support, instead of paying uh, just a small amount more to the hosting company. So if, if you want to find a quality hosting company, you, sh you should find someone who is proactive and also they should be communicative in what they are doing if they upgrade PHP to 7 they should do it uh, they should communicate it maybe half year before they start doing it so you have the time to test it uh, of course you want a fast server and also reliable uptime and what I really need is SSH access so I can use the command line and do stuff like Git, but I don't do it yet on the server, on the live server. So um, yeah, choose a quality provider. But this is uh, an open door, and I think we all know. Uh, yeah, we should go to good providers. Um, then, if you install Joomla and you start with the Joomla website uh, on your own computer, you probably have to configure a lot of stuff like you know all those boxes with details written by, published by, etc. And also this. I always switch it off. I switch it off. I've been switching it off for 12 years. <coughs> Every time over and over and over again. Of course, you can use Akiba Backup. Create just one really great site with all the components you need, all the configuration settings you need. And for every project, you just install it. And there is one thing I was afraid of. It's the secret code, the secret key uh, used for generating stuff. 
uh, if you install this on a new site with Akiba Kickstart, it will generate a new one. So it's great. Only you have to update all the extensions and then sometimes you need things with new modules or so I ended up with thinking about I should do it some other way. So the manual way is just go to content articles options and you just click everything. It's etched in my brain still. But uh, I developed something for myself and I decided that maybe other people can use it as well. It's called options manager. And it exports and imports options using JSON. So you have a text file with all the settings and you can put it in a, on a Dropbox and when you install something you just load those settings and you don't have to include all those things. Um, you can do things with plugins, modules and templates. But when I made this I found a really di interesting difference between components and modules or plugins and template styles because components and plugins can have only one set of settings active at one time and modules and templates it's just a module with multiple instances so you can have one called com mod, um, mod underscore custom we all use it and you can create a lot of different modules with it but you use just one module with different instances so uh, you can have more of those but components and plugins I made something that you can toggle between <coughs> them. so uh, here you have buttons if you import something you can toggle between uh, the old version it, uh, it has of settings or the new version. I will s uh, show it in the demo. And uh, of course uh, I have a batch mode mm -hmm. so you can just import the zip with all the files. And there is also something called a menu check. Like if you set your global configuration for components um, you might hide things. And if in menu items you say <coughs> show you override it. So, and if you change it, it will still be show. So here you can see the differences between the global settings and the settings in your menu manager. Um, There's a uh, free version of it. It's a light version and it's limited to components. So you can just import one component setting that will save you also time. Usability. Um, this is the definition of usability. Like you want to have specified users to perform, to achieve specified goals with some effectiveness and eff efficiency and satisfaction in a specif specified context. And I really like this book. It's of Steve Kruk, uh, Don't Make Me Think. And he talks about consistency. And he only talks about uh, the front end of a website, how it should be consistent, like the menu should be consistent, etc. Um, one, one chapter in it is called Omit Needless Words and I really love it because he crossed out the needless. You have to limit choices. So in the backend of Joomla when you go to components you have banners, compo uh, contacts, news feeds and also smart search. Who uses those? Okay, couple, maybe in a couple of instances. Smart search? Yeah, sometimes. Okay. So <coughs> if you don't need it why not <laughs> just switch it off? You can do that manually. Permissions. Yes. No, no permissions. I will get back to that. You can do that manually. Uh, just go uh, in the back end. You go to uh, extensions, manage. And then you have the whole list. And uh, just search for unprotected administrator component. It will show a list of all the components that are installed. Joomla's, but also third party extensions and you can just click them off and when you switch them off you have a, a smaller menu so just click them off switch them off and then this menu will be shorter so you have little uh, less choices less thinking yes less thinking and you probably have a couple of uh, templates on your website and if you want to uh, assign a module to a certain module position you have to choose between maybe two or three or four templates you have to disable all the unused templates the same in the same method as I just showed you. So it's easier to do. And of course, you know, I think it was in 3.7, uh, you can now create backend menus, which can also uh, <coughs> create less choices. So um, 
something else. Is it, uh, sorry, is yeah. that something that your plugin can do or your no. extension? No, this okay. is just you have to do this manually. Okay. Yeah, it's not a. <laughs> it's not a component. No. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> but Look, this pay him, he will make the <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know there's uh, a question for it now. <laughs> so, something else. Um, I, somebody said something about permissions. Um, yeah, Yuma has a really nice access control list feature. And I know that most of us are really handy with Joomla. We just install stuff, we do everything with it. Sometimes it breaks, but we always have backups, don't we? <coughs> and we also have customers, and those are maybe not that handy. So um, maybe you want to limit stuff for customers. So what you could start doing is create a new group in Joomla. You go uh, to um, the users, then uh, groups, and uh, say I would like to have a new group called limited admin or something else, what you think is good, and put it under the parent uh, public. If you create <coughs> a new user, and you assign the user to the limited admin group, that you, which you just created, um, you should also change something with uh, the view access levels. Just go to the special, the one called special, and uh, add the limited admin group to the special. <coughs> and after that, go to a global configuration, click on permissions, and uh, go to the limited admin group and select the admin login to be allowed. So in this case, all the users that are in um, the group called limited admin now have backend access. However, they don't see much. Only help and I think control panel, that's the only thing they see. So mm -hmm. one question here. Uh, normally, I put no groups under administrator, so that is wrong. I should put them under special. Is that correct? Um, sorry. What? So you have super user. Yeah. You have special, and you have administrator. That is the minimum or manager, I believe. Is no administrator is the minimum that you can access the backend, right? Um, you, I think, mixing two things like uh, viewing levels yeah. and groups. Yeah. And the groups is administrators or uh, yeah. super users, but super user and administrator are viewing level special. And but by, maybe by allowing the admin login action, people can log in on the backend, so it's not needed to have a nested under the administrator. Okay. I hope that we have time, uh, and I will show yeah. it on yeah. the backend. So, uh, if you want to uh, give them real proper access, you go again uh, uh, to uh, your components in the backend. And for every component, you go to options, go to the permissions, and then you s for the limited group, because you have a lot of things, for the limited, you set access administrator interface allowed. And then, in for instance, if you do it for articles, then your new user can log in, see content, he, see, will, he or she will see articles, and then they can do anything. Because you also have to create, delete, etc. all the actions, you have to allow it before they can do stuff. I will show that in a demo. It's a lot of work. It's doable, but it's a lot of work. Unfortunately, uh, there is um, some nice tool um, called ACL Manager, which <coughs> makes it really easy. And uh, Sander Potcher is in the, in the back. He's the creator of this uh, fancy tool. Um, it's marvelous, because it saves you so much time. So uh, if you go to ACL Manager, um, Control Panel, you see the limited admin group I just created. And if I click it, I have a whole interface of all the um, components, but also categories, in my uh, in my site, and I just click here admin, and then it's done. And now uh, the limited admin group has access to uh, to log in on the admin side. So it is saves so much time, and there is something else. Uh, you probably have had issues with the assets table in the past, everybody has. And with uh, ACL Manager, it repairs it. And uh, from a good source, I heard that there will be a new version, uh, I don't know when, but soon, that has even power more powerful uh, repair function for assets. Uh, just ask the developer of it. So 
Another thing you can do is uh, the editor. The editor of Joomla, it's uh, by default TinyMCE. Oh, and again, it has a lot of options. I don't use this, I get mad. So I always install Joomla Content Editor and I get mad as well because there are too many options. Who uses a JC editor like this? Like this? No, 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 no. Oh. I, 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 sorry. Just, no, because it's like sink. With, with four rows of icons, okay. you can use uh, an option in JC editor called editor profiles, and you can just drag all the things you want. And uh, I created my own profile, and mm -hmm. I imported on every site uh, with this uh, JC editor. And this is my profile. Just a couple of things my customers need. I don't need, need tables, and if they need it, I just add it. But uh, things have to do with the font, or uh, paragraphs, or with hyperlinks, or copy and paste. And yeah, this is this is everything. Missing the tables here. Sorry? Tables? No. No, I, I remove it. No, I need. Uh, but <laughs> you can you can add it. If uh, you like. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, uh, I, I reduced it even more, so I just uh, have basically. Uh, um, uh, bold and theirs and um, hyperlinks. Yeah. And then I use also the kitchen sink and then oh, yes, there yes. also a table, tables or whatever. But yes. So Frank is mentioning the kitchen sink, which is just a small button. You can put it on the end, and if you click it, uh, it will open up more buttons, but it will hide it for the first time. And Good. I. Yes? You she can did? do that with tiny MC now. Too. Oh, okay, but That's you can't true. move the buttons. Can you? I you yeah. you can move yeah. it too? Okay. Oh, that's new for me. It's already okay. Oh, I have to check that. Thanks. So, one thing I didn't do: uh, you have all those buttons here. Also, a lot of choices. You can disable those as well using uh, manage in, in the admin. So, uh, GCE editor uh, is really nice. The free version. You can uh, have a profile per component, so maybe you, you have certain components that need uh, uh, different bars or different options. You just can create uh, profiles for that. You can also uh, limit profiles to certain directories. For instance, maybe you have a users uh, in a certain group called uh, authors, and you want to have them uh, uh, that, that they only can uh, go to a certain folder to put their images. So the images won't be in all the folders. You can uh, limit it in it. There is also a pro version of it, which I really like because it has extra plugins. And one of those is automatic resize uploaded images. And I use it a lot. It saves me a lot of time because my customers sometimes have these kinds of images and they, they don't know how to uh, resize it before uploading it. Um, the PDF uh, links are also nice, so you can upload a PDF, link it in an article, and then you just have a small uh, PDF icon in front of it. And of course, movie clips are a nice feature. Um, yeah. Maintenance. We all do maintenance. I mean, I hope you st uh, are using the latest Joomla version at the moment. <coughs> um, the maintenance you have to do is create backups update Joomla, update third-party extensions, and also do some security checks, checks one in a while, one, once in a while. And if you have a lot of websites, um, you have to keep a, lo a lot, uh, your eyes on a lot of websites and you, you will get mad. So there are some uh, technical uh, tools for technical maintenance, uh, as software as a service. I show here three. Uh, you can use my Joomla, Perfect Dashboard, or Watchfully. Um, to monitor your sites and if there is an update you uh, might get a notification and you can use the tools they are all paid tools but you can use it to uh, update multiple websites at the same time and uh, perfect dashboard is from uh, Alexander who uh, did the, um, the keynote this morning then continuous integration can somebody show tell me what it is sorry yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I didn't. Meant, I, I meant uh, continue that the word continuous integration because it's oh, a really nice. fancy word. Um, but it's just how to get my new stuff to the live site. That's continuous integration because you want to develop and get the things you develop on the live site, but once at a, at a time. 
What I use is PHPStorm and Git to do this kind of stuff. When I create extensions, I create a, a folder called my uh, extension name called a slash source and there I create a Joomla folder structure of my component. I will show you in a minute. And I uh, do something in PHPStorm that when I change something in my component it will automatically uh, copy the stuff I did to my test site. And sometimes I commit and push my stuff, the things I did, to the repository. I just, just do it in my folder. And it's also easy to deploy to the acceptance or the live site just using PHPStorm. Um, somebody said something about Git and uh, synchronization. Uh, yes, there's a link, uh, automatic Git synchronization. I have not dared to use it on a live site yet. Uh, I have to experiment with it. Finally, uh, payment. We, if we do it for customers, we want to get paid. And I don't know your customers. I hope uh, your customers pay in time. Who has customers who always pay in time? Yeah. Oh, uh, up front. Can well, we yeah. switch yeah. customers? <laughs> <laughs> well, some no. of my customers no, are really not, nice. Not, not this one. Not this one. Uh, my customers uh, pay up front. Okay, that's a good point. Because you don't want to hear this. Or if they have a cat, <laughs> or everything. Most of the time, you just you just send an invoice and you don't hear anything of, of them. And sometimes you have to uh, send them a uh, reminder. And sometimes another reminder, and it's annoying because, um, yeah, you want to get paid for the things you did for the customer. So uh, here is a, a great uh, suggestion. I use prepaid support tickets. So they pay some cash upfront, like for 10 hours. Maybe you can give them a small discount, so it's better for them uh, to, to, to choose for, the, for this kind of uh, payment. And then you don't have to uh, get to ask your client if they uh, could please pay, if they just pay before your work. So um, I would like to do a small demo now. I have to change um, my screen because otherwise I get uh, a stiff neck. So I hope you can help. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so the first thing I would like to show, I have to, to change something in the settings because it doesn't work like this. I don't have to have the buttons on the... lost all my buttons so I will just try to do it like this um, so I created a small website called jday.de <coughs> and it's still in 375 I know and if I log in I have some components installed and what I did I added some I, ch I went to the language files and I added uh, a greater than so the, the things I installed are on top of it just for this presentation I don't have to look in the whole list so the first thing I would like to show um, I will sh open a new window if I go to content articles uh, I can go to options and here I can select all options and just say hide, 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 etc. I won't do it now, so 
this is how it starts then I go to uh, the component I created it's called uh, options manager and I have an option called uh, import I can just import something uh, I have to go to my folder uh, JDEDE extensions options manager and I want to import my content so com content now you can see it's imported it's articles com content if I go here there isn't nothing happens and if I go uh, to the front end I go to uh, the content component you can still see this but if I go to the back end and I just click this icon I switch from the original settings to the important settings so now if I go here and I refresh the screen you will see a lot of things getting red so basically you're saying it's just overruling or is it changing its settings it's changing the settings okay. but before it changes it, it looks at the current settings can you switch so back now? Or yes okay. so I switch now back and now it's like it was before you imported it um, there is only one thing maybe you have a customer who uh, is looking into the articles and thinks, and thinks okay I want, want to hide the title so they change it and now it's not original like it was and also not important so then you get like this a warning so you know something changed so it's not original like it was before and it's not like the imported and if I want to have like it import I do like this and then it's okay again so uh, maybe you have a Kiba backup on your website or a JC editor and uh, you want to update it and you always have to add the download ID it could be annoying so you could also <laughs> export uh, on the site uh, the settings of Akiba backup like this import it on new one switch it on and then you have the download ID added <coughs> so I don't have to add the download IDs I just do it once I export it it's the same with JCE editor a uh, JCE editor has a control panel uh, within options uh, you can update options there's no update key now but if I just Picture. import no there is no <laughs> it doesn't show no, it like here you can have uh, different uh, keys for different sites so uh, yeah you do not have to uh, use the master key so, so JCE and now it has an update key so it's easy for that as well uh, the other thing I wanted to show is if you go to manage uh, manage extension manage search tools I want to have the unprotected administrator uh, components and I don't want to have banners oh let me show you oh, let me first show you uh, the current menu banners is now already gone uh, but contact is still there and the smart search also so let's go to the smart search oh I should keep it like this and let's go to the contacts and now uh, if you go to components it's less options and if you go to uh, modules and you have a module like custom <coughs> and you want to select a position you have B3 protostar active positions and B3 I don't use it and if I disable it if done then uh, so I do clear these I disable it and if I go to the custom module position I only have protostar now the only active one so this saves you time in looking which module position do I have to need um, so I was telling you about uh, the users uh, I want to manage a new group so I create a new group let's call it JD 17 DE so I have a special uh, Joomla Day user group for Joomla Day Germany oh and I should say public yes so I create it on the public and I go to access levels I go to special and in special I say uh, yeah they, the E should also have the special one then I create a new user oh sorry 
I create a new user. Uh, myself. Pass it to Peter. So, and you have to assign this user to uh, JDDE, the new user group. Then, if I go to a new So in review uh, MD, Joomla, oh, well, hold, localhost, um, it's called this one, this one, and if I go to the backend, uh, my name is Peter, oh. oh, yes, I have to, so this is, already difficult I forgot one thing I have to go to uh, options and the global configuration options to the permissions and I have to say JDE should have administrator login and now I am able to log in this is I forgot so if I go to the other browser and I log in with Peter you have a really 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 clean only control panel on help. So if I want to give them access to uh, the other uh, things like articles, I go to articles, options, I go to permissions, I set JDDE, and I say okay they have the administrator interface allow and also all the things I want to uh, add them to. And if I go now, like this, I have a new one, content, but you can see it's a lot of work. And if I go to the ACL manager, I can just go to my group that I created, and I can see everything what they can do. Like, should they be able to configure something like uh, my articles? Um, should they be able to create something in articles like uncategorized art articles? And I say create, create. And that way, if they go to articles, oh, there should save be something. Save it first. Save it first? I thought I. Uh In a new version, no new oh. Version. No. Okay, yes, now I have a new button because I saved it. Thank you, Sender. <laughs> so I'm able to, to change, to, to, to make it like this. Um, so this is uh, a nice overview where you can just specify uh, what your user can do. Um, how much time do we have? One minute. Um, I, it's too short to show my uh, Git workflow, but if people want to, to see it, I can do it afterwards, after the session. Um, it, it's like this, in short. If I create a project, I go to Tools, in PHP Storm, to Tools, Deployment, and I create a new called localhost and I mount it to a certain folder and everything I changed will be saved exactly there um, there's no time for this now uh, if you are curious just come to me after the session are there any questions? Uh, yes? I think you said something like uh, you can set permissions that the customers only can uh, add pictures in specific Yes, you have to use JCE editor, yeah, can do that? and uh, in JC editor, uh, cancel. It's pretty annoying. Customers supporting images. Yeah. The highest level of the so I have this. Uh, uh, well, the default level, for instance. Um, here you can say, uh, should they, should this be able in the front end and back end? And uh, if you go to Very yeah the uh, then plugin. on the left an AC image sorry a little bit down look look for the icon there image manager there yes. okay like, uh, yeah and here you can uh, specify things like the file directory path and you can use 
parameters like uh, username etc so if your username is Peter uh, you can create uh, images slash Peter and then I can only access that if I'm logged in and the editor is uh, set to my user mm -hmm. that's only in the pro version I think I'm not sure if this is only in the pro version it's yes it's only in pro in, 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 yeah Okay. In uh, the first step, you can also say which user is allowed to use that profile. Yeah. Here. So you can make more profiles. Mm. Like uh, you can say uh, only uh, even uh, the devices you can uh, if if somebody is on on the yeah. desktop. Which is important for this case. Uh, you can also uh, clone profiles, mm. uh, which is very handy if you just want to have basically the same settings but just per user one different upload directory. Yeah, this, this, this feature inspired me, among other things, to um, to do the to do something with uh, uh, importing stuff. This is XML, I use JSON. So uh, this is an optimized profile if I import it and I set it should be able to set it to the import yeah. yeah. So now I have my own uh, optimized <coughs> profile. If I go to uh, content articles, you can see that my hey oh <laughs> uh, demo. This is a demo. <laughs> I have to switch to uh, my site. I have to say JCE close, and now it should say. So now I have a, a better. Oh. Maybe may, maybe you can show very short on the kitchen sink for people who oh, yes. do not okay. know that. Yeah. So component uh, JC editor, I go to my profiles and this one customer really wants to have uh, tables. So yeah. I go to um, features layout, then I put the kitchen sink in it, this, this icon. Oh, you could well. oh, okay. And I put so something else like, yeah. oh. So ignorant, I never knew what it was. <laughs> um, I would uh, normally like do the kitchen sink at the very at the very beginning. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. But, but this is it's just a demo. To, to see the <laughs> you have to uh, actually. Uh, I have this optimized profile. I always use it. But yeah. if you are really into uh, the user themselves, you should ask them how they should things yeah. configured. So now, if I, I want to ar write an article and I really want a table in this article. I just press this button and I have like so if you don't give the permission for the kitchen sink they don't see everything what's below there right yeah right oh, yeah including, you just, including yeah. the image right? yeah but it's not about permission ah yeah for the profile well, only profile. for the kitchen yes. sink yeah. not the button uh, yes um, you highlighted a previous piece back up and update a service sorry you highlighted a previous piece Software as a service, it was watchful, watchful 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 watchful. Yeah. Are you using one of them by itself? Uh, yes. Uh, it's just. Okay. Um, <coughs> it's just, I think, a matter of. Uh, uh, you have to try them all, I think. And then to get which one you have the best feeling with. Uh, at the moment, I'm using watchful. And it was because one of my uh, friends was using Watchfully and he showed me how he used it and I thought, oh yeah, that's nice. But um, a perfect dashboard and uh, uh, my Joomla are also nice and they do similar things. So mm -hmm. you have to compare them with prices, features, etc. Do, yes? so, so, <coughs> do you not have a feeling with the uh, login data in Joomla? Do you not have that feeling That's a good question. Yes, that's a really good question. Because I moved all my stuff to VPS service in Holland uh, when I heard about uh, what NSA is doing. It's not that I have anything to hide, it's just I want to uh, not give away all kinds of information. And it's your, not your data, because yes. it's the customer's data. Yes, and a certain, if you are working for uh, governments, etc., uh, they uh, even uh, might uh, comply that the data is stored within the European Union. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm a bit now. You, you made me worried, worried about this. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Frank. 
so um, basically I'm using, so I, I do not know perfect dashboard, but I'm using both watchfully in my Joomla for different purposes because everybody, uh, so for updating I use watchfully and for auditing, which I do regularly with all sites, I use my Joomla. And uh, with the customers uh, that have a paid subscription for um, updates and audits, um, I make it clear that I'm using external services. Yeah. They have the ability to say, no, you are not allowed to use it. But then I would charge them as long as it takes me. And most times? customers are not willing to pay 500 mm. euros for updates <coughs> and security yeah, yeah. audits done just by myself. Okay, good point. Yeah. yeah? So. And of course, uh, th those software as services and also uh, extensions that you use, uh, you can charge your customers for it. I mean, uh, you're providing them a service and uh, if they don't have to think about it and you take care of everything, yeah, it's a service. Yeah. Uh, there's also an extension like Staging Manager. It's from uh, from somebody else. Staging Manager. Staging Manager. Okay. You can put it on your own Joomla website, and then synchronize all the websites, and you can just update all the extensions. So there's no need for it. Um, I don't need all these. Okay, but do you have all the same sites, or will it? Yeah, it's on my own server. Yeah, but you you install all the extensions you have on the, all the sites. So if your one site uses, for instance, Aki Mailing. Mm -hmm. And the other uses maybe uh, some other mailing tool. You have both on the on the same site. I'm not sure if you understand that. But if, uh, if if you got two components, we're doing the same thing. For example, um, what's this? DC newsletter and AC. Yes, yes. Yeah. For instance, it's thank just, you. Just updating, right? Or yeah. Yeah. Well, it will just say, okay, these are the updates. Update them all at the same time, done. And it won't push. Things that are not installed to the site. Okay. Oh, so what's the name again? Staging, uh, staging manager? manager. You can even uh, install something that you have. Like if you have one. Uh, oh yes, internet. Can, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> yeah. So it's from a guy from Greece, and uh, you can even say, okay, I have a plugin, and I want it to be installed on all SP staging. Yeah, that's it. Oh, it's just like the monitoring, uh, uh, J yeah, monitoring. Yeah, uh, which extensions, uh, Joomla versions, you have a whole overview. It, you can install it on your own Joomla website, on your own server, so okay. everything is internal. Okay, well, it's a nice option. I, uh, I will look and at you, it as well. You can uh, even, uh, I don't know how to do that, uh, inject JavaScript via that thing too, for all sites, I don't know how, where okay. or PHP, I believe. Um, you know, what I do is if I have an extension for the first time, yeah. I just upload it there and it will install all the uh, websites. And I can also, for example, say I disable that plugin on every website. Okay. You know, I just synchronize and say, okay, uh, filter, and all the stages will uh, show that. Okay. So now I have a fourth thing to mention uh, next time. <laughs> Stacy Manager. Okay, thank you. Um, I think it's time now. Yeah.